Last June, I graduated from high school. Making new friends has never really been my fort, but the holidays gave me a chance to reconnect with my old friend, Peter and John. Peter is a tall and stout guy, while John is even taller, about six feet, skinny, and he has a lot of acne on his face. Both of them often found themselves in trouble, whether it was drinking, smoking, or hanging out in places they really shouldn't have been. There was a time when I genuinely enjoyed their company. They had a unique charm and a perspective on life that resonated with me. But things changed when they started pressuring me to join them in their questionable activities. They insisted that we go on a camping trip, promising that we would have fun, do a bit of drinking, and relive old memories. I agreed to spend the night camping with them on Saturday, even though deep down, I knew it was a bad idea. I wasn't sure why I didn't just say no. I knew something was off, but I didn't act on it. So, I got into their car and we drove to a deep forest area, where I began to feel uneasy. My senses were on high alert, warning me that something strange might happen. We set up our camp in a deserted spot, and Peter and John immediately started drinking and smoking. They were laughing and joking about the smallest things, completely disregarding everything around them. Then, they started pressuring me to smoke. I don't usually smoke, but I occasionally do it. The cigarette they handed me smelled odd, but I didn't think much of it and started smoking. The smell was peculiar, and soon, I began to feel strange. My vision became blurry, and Peter and John were just laughing and watching me, which made me even more anxious. I told them that I wasn't feeling well, that my body didn't feel right, and my heartbeat was racing. They dismissed my concerns, telling me it was nothing and that I should just enjoy myself. My condition worsened and I started vomiting. That's when I realized they had given me drugs, which made me feel completely out of control. I had never experienced anything like this before, especially since I don't normally smoke, let alone use drugs. I felt like I was on the verge of dying. The intoxication was overwhelming. And I had no idea what kind of drug they had given me, but it was extremely potent. It was a terrifying experience. I was in a state of complete disorientation and fear. That day was one of the strangest and most frightening of my life. I decided then and there that I would never see either of them again or have any form of contact with them. The whole incident left me with troubling thoughts that I couldn't shake. I regret ever agreeing to go with them. I blocked them both from my phone and resolved never to have any more contact with them. I'm Rachel, and I had been struggling with a lot of depression in my life. Determined to overcome it and find some peace, I decided to take a camping trip with my dog, Tommy. We both hoped that the serenity of nature and the fresh air would help. The first few days were absolutely wonderful. The scent of the leaves and the gentle breezes were soothing to my soul. Tommy was by my side and his presence made me feel safe and reassured. But as soon as the sun began to set, Tommy's behavior took a turn. He started barking and growling at unseen things. At first, I thought it was just the new environment or perhaps nocturnal animals in the forest. However, as time went on, his reactions became increasingly alarming. One night, I sensed an eerie silence. When I opened my eyes, Tommy was missing. My heart raced with panic. I quickly got out of the tent and began searching for him. The campsite was bathed in moonlight, but the light seemed oddly unsettling. I followed Tommy's paw prints. The earthy smell and the scent of fallen leaves made me uneasy. Further I went, the more intense the fear became. I felt as though the forest was closing in on me in an unnerving way. Suddenly, a terrifying scream broke the silence. It was Tommy's cry, but it was distorted and filled with pain, bending chills through me. My heart pounded, but my love for Tommy pushed me to keep going. I stumbled into a clearing where the moonlight revealed a horrifying sight. Tommy lay on the ground, his body badly injured and covered in blood. Tears streamed down my face as the grief of his death overwhelmed me. Then, from the shadows, an ominous presence emerged. As I turned, I saw a figure lurking in the darkness. When it stepped into the light, 
I saw it was a deranged man with a wild, menacing look. His eyes were filled with madness, and his blood-stained shirt was a grim testament to his violence. The sinister grin on his face terrified me even more. My survival instincts took over. I bolted, my heart racing, and fled through the treacherous forest path. Thorns scraped my skin as I ran, desperately searching for a way out. Exhaustion threatened to stop me, but my will to survive drove me forward. I couldn't afford to look back, terrified that the man might be chasing me. Eventually, I reached the edge of the forest. My breath came in ragged gasps, and I was nearly collapsing from fear. With the first light of dawn, I saw park rangers nearby, who had come in response to reports of my disappearance. I told them my story, my voice trembling, and they informed me that they hadn't been able to find the deranged man. After that night, I made it my mission to warn others about the dangers of the forest. I began promoting safe camping practices and raising awareness about wilderness hazard. The memory of that night still lingers with me, constant reminder of the terror I experienced. My name is Abraham, and I've always had a passion for adventure and camping. A few days ago, my two friends, Albert and Susian, and I decided to spend a night camping by a beautiful lake. The area was serene, with crystal clear water and towering trees that created a picturesque environment. In the evening, we gathered around a campfire, sharing stories and enjoying each other's company. After dinner, we thought it would be exciting to explore the nearby forest for a while. As we ventured into the woods, we noticed several trees bearing fruits that were orange in color, fruits we had never seen before. Curious, we decided to taste them. The fruits were quite sour, but I felt a surge of excitement and thought it was essential to examine them more closely. As night fell and darkness enveloped the forest, things began to take a disturbing turn. My surroundings started to distort and I began experiencing dizziness and confusion. My mind became increasingly erratic, filled with strange thoughts and fears. I started to believe that Albert and Susian were plotting against me. Every action and word from them seemed suspicious, and their innocent conversations only added to my growing anxiety and confusion. I struggled to understand them and to grasp their intentions, which seemed increasingly opaque. I wanted to tell them about my deteriorating condition, but my words were incoherent and fragmented. They couldn't make sense of what I was trying to communicate. Their attempts to calm me down seemed futile, only exacerbating my sense of paranoia. My fears extended beyond just my friends. I began to suspect that even the authorities might be involved in the conspiracy against me. My fear and paranoia escalated rapidly. In a state of panic, I made a frantic call to the local police station. My call was disjointed and distressing, and the authorities struggled to understand what was happening. They dispatched a small team to check the forest, and my fear of not surviving the night grew exponentially. The police arrived with their flashlights, cutting through the darkness of the night. Seeing the disturbed expressions on Albert and Susian's faces intensified my paranoia making me think that even the police were against me. The authorities tried to calm me down with soothing tones and assured me they were there to help. Gradually, my grip on reality began to loosen, and I started to follow the police out of the forest. My mind began to clear a bit as I left the woods behind. The police escorted me out of the forest, and as I emerged into the open area, I saw that Albert and Susian were nearby their faces showing confusion and distress. The police provided me with medical help, and the toxic effects of the orange fruits began to wane. As I regained clarity, I realized how I had misjudged my friends and the authorities. The experience brought a strange sense of relief. Albert and Susian supported me through my recovery, standing by me during this traumatic experience. What was intended to be an adventurous camping trip turned into a nightmarish episode of psychological distress. The hallucinations and paranoia led us to an unforgettable and haunting conclusion. That night in the forest became a stark reminder of how I had underestimated the fragility of my mental state. Since that day, 
I have been cautious about interacting with unfamiliar things in forested areas, avoiding anything that might pose a risk to my health. The experience has taught me a valuable lesson about the potential dangers of consuming unknown substances and the importance of maintaining mental clarity during stressful situations.